Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Monti. Today we're going to talk about the emerging best predictor of lifespan and longevity. And it might be something you've never heard of. I have a top expert in the field who's going to discuss this with us today. And hang on till the end to hear what the most elite athletes are doing to increase their longevity. And with me today is Dr. Nate Handley. Dr. Handley, welcome. Thanks, Dr. Monty. All right, so people are very interested and focused on longevity and the best indicators of longevity. And since this is your area of expertise, Tell us what your thoughts are on this and what the best indicator that you can think of is. It's a question I get a lot. And I think one of the, one of the clear best markers is this thing called VO2 max. VO2 max. VO2 stands for volume of oxygen. And max means the maximal consumption. And so specifically, VO2 max is a, is a measure. It's something that can be measured directly. And it is the milliliters of oxygen consumed per kilogram of body weight per minute in an individual. And what's important about that calculation? So what's important about it is it, it gives you information about the efficiency by which a body can utilize oxygen. And oxygen is this critical thing for, for life, which, you know, in and of itself, that doesn't sound maybe that important. Maybe it's, maybe it's good, maybe it's not good. I think people have really started talking about VO2 max because there was a major study that came out in 2018 that strongly correlated VO2 max with survival. Since then, people have really been very interested in VO2 max. It was a good study, it was a big study, and we can talk about how it was done. So essentially what this study did is they looked at over 100,000 individuals who were getting stress testing, and they were specifically doing this VO2 max testing. So they're on the treadmill, and they also are measuring how much oxygen they're consuming as they're exercising. Yeah, exactly. So the way VO2 max is measured is, the classic way it's measured, is that you're on a treadmill or a stationary bike. Uh-huh. And you are exercising, and you're exercising to a point where you get to maximal exertion. And so that's until you reach a target heart rate, or until you're just like, I can't do this anymore. While you're exercising, you also have a mask attached to your face. And what it is measuring, and the mask is measuring some things, it's measuring how much oxygen you are taking in, and it's also measuring how much carbon dioxide you're producing. And so this is a kind of, it's kind of a complicated test. You can't just do this on your own treadmill at home. It requires some sophistication and precision to do, and it's done in a very particular way. But what you're able to calculate from, from that type of test is this, this VO2 max number. But really the only way to do it is in this specific scenario. So this group in 2018 did a study of 100,000 people who did VO2 max testing. And what they did is they broke the, the study group into five different groups based on what, the, what their VO2 max was. And then they followed them over a couple of years. And so the five groups were basically the different levels of VO2 max. And so there was a low, which was the 25th percentile and below. There was below average, which was 25th to 49th. There was above, there was average, which was 49th to 75th. There was very good or excellent, which was 75th to 97th. And then there was elite, which was just this 3% group at the very top. And just again, to summarize, that elite group is utilizing the oxygen that they breathe in better than anyone else. Right, these are people with very high VO2 maxes. So they, they looked at these groups and then they looked at survival over time. And this is an indicator of cardiorespiratory fitness. Yes, exactly. And so it's really about, it's about how, how fit your body is. And cardiovascular fitness is really a, a really critical piece of that. And so it's strength of your heart, strength of your lungs, um, you know, that your muscular strength plays into it as well, because if you don't have muscle strength, then you then you can't optimize your heart and lung efficiency. So it's a good measure of many different systems in the body, actually. And what they found is that the risk of death in the elite group compared to the very low group, the risk of death decreased by 80%. 80%? 80%. Wow. In those, in those extreme groups. And so that caught people's attention. What was additionally interesting is that even between the two highest groups, 
like the, the super elite top 3% and then the 75 to 97%, there was still a big difference. There was about a 25% reduction in risk in the elite group versus the almost elite group. And the conclusion of the study was that there was no upper limit that they observed in terms of the benefits of VO2 max. So the more fit you are, the better it is for your longevity, basically. That is the conclusion of the study. And really fit as measured by VO2 max. Right, exactly. And so then the question becomes, how do people measure VO2 max? And we talked about the treadmill test and how this is, or, or the, you know, the- And you do that test. in your practice? And we do it in our practice. Okay. And so, you know, we do that as, as one of our, our assessments for someone's longevity. There are easy ways for people to kind of sort of back of the envelope. Like getting indirect themselves. measure. Mm -hmm. There are indirect measures and a lot of wearables actually have started measuring VO2 max. Okay. And obviously they, they can't do it in the, you know, the gold standard way where you're like hooked up to a, to a mask and, and all those things. But what they do, Apple Watch can do it, Garmin's can do it, is they, they basically track your heart rate. And then if you're exercising outside, they track your speed, they track your elevation changes, and then they, they run this through an algorithm, basically, that is, that is based on a, a sub-maximal exertion protocol. So exercising, but not maybe at your, your maximum output. And then if you do that for kind of 20 continuous minutes, then it can start giving you calculations. And it gets better over time. The longer you do this, the more consistently you do it, the better the, the reliability of the results are. But they'll give you a predicted VO2 max. And it's not perfect, but it's actually pretty good. And you know, we've compared them in our clinic, people who have their, people come in with their Apple Watches and we ask what their VO2 max is, and then we measure it. And they're often pretty close. So to what degree can people actually improve upon their VO2 max? Yeah, the nice thing about VO2 max is that it can be improved. And it is, it's true that there are some genetic drivers that maybe predispose someone to a higher VO2 max or a lower VO2 max. And that's something that we also sometimes assess in our, in our clinic. But, you know, the protocols, the, the strategies to enhance VO2 max are really about overall cardiovascular and, and muscular fitness. Mm -hmm. And so there are a couple of things that we often talk about with people. One of the things we talk about is HIIT training or high, high, intensity, high intensity interval training. That's, that's something that is often part of a, a protocol to enhance VO2 max. And, um, Another part of a training protocol is often this kind of lower intensity training for extended periods of time. And so something people talk about a lot now is this zone two training, which is training where you're, you're below what's called the anaero anaerobic threshold for exercise. You're, you're still using oxygen when you're exercising. Um, and so your heart rate is relatively low. It's, between 65 and 75 percent of your your maximal heart rate but doing that for extended periods of time increases your cardiovascular efficiency for vo2 max training i usually recommend mostly zone 2 training with some components of high intensity high intensity interval training but then it's also important to incorporate some strength training because part of of efficiency of oxygen utilization is, is just how much you can you can do and and having muscles themselves Having muscles themselves is a really important piece of that. And so it's not just about aerobic activity. It is interesting. There can be a, a huge amount of variation in VO2 max, and, and we know now that it, that it correlates with, with longevity. If you're trying to understand if your VO2 max is good or not, um, it depends on a couple things. It depends on your age, and it depends on your gender. And so there are basically calculators that can help you figure, figure this out. But as you age, VO2 max tends to decrease over time. It, it invariably decreases over time. And so a VO2 max of, say, 50 for someone who's in their late 40s might be very good. But the same VO2 max for someone who is in their 20s is, is not as good. What's interesting is seeing how high these numbers can go. And, and when you start looking at elite athletes, these numbers are, are through the chart or off the charts. And the people who have really high VO2 maxes tend to be the professional cyclers and cross country skiers. Mm. And one of the highest VO2 maxes that was measured was 97, I think. It was astronomically high when you consider that an excellent VO2 max for many people would be in the 50s. 
So these are people who have big muscular thighs and legs mm -hmm. and also are very cardiovascular fit. Yes. Yeah. Right. So it's not just, it's More not a, the other. it's not a bodybuilder per right. se, because a bodybuilder may not have great cardiovascular fitness. Right. And we see that from time to time. And it may also not just be the the distance runner, because the distance runner, they may, you know, they, they may be training to such a point that they have a lower muscle mass. And so you really do have to have both. And when you, th when you start getting on, on the edge and starting to like really push the envelope in terms of ways to enhance VO2 max, you can think about other interesting training strategies. This is why athletes train at altitude, for example, when, when, they're, trying to, when they're training for the Olympics or something like that, because the decreased oxygen availability requires enhanced cardiac output, essentially. This is also why people have started doing something called hypoxia training, where it's basically the same, but you, you create an environment maybe at, not at altitude, but that simulates altitude. Another Forcing thing. your body to more efficiently utilize the oxygen it has. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, other things people talk about are blood flow restriction training, where you basically slightly decrease blood flow to you know, your arms or legs. That, that increases the, it basically makes your muscles work harder with less effort, and so that can enhance muscular, muscular growth. Um, people also talk about something called EWOT, which is exercise with oxygen therapy. And in that, you can actually give extra oxygen, and then you can do some hypoxia training with it, and that can, that can further enhance VO2 max. Well, I guess exercise really is the fountain of youth here. Yeah, it's, it's really important. And, and now we know, we know why and how, and we can measure it on a very individual level. Well, this was a great conversation, terrific information. Always learn something when I talk to you. Thank you, Dr. Hanley, for joining us today. Thanks, Dr. Monty.